Hello and welcome back to Misery Loves Mandy, where comedians talk about miserable moments and whether or not they made them into jokes. This week's guest is Fizza Dasani. We talked about both growing up in Florida, um, a moment when when you gotta go, you gotta go, which we could all relate to, and dealing with crazy dog owners. Something you don't even realize that goes on until you have a dog. I'm also very excited for this week's sponsor, Jude. It is a bladder control supplement that I personally take, and it has made the biggest difference. Um, You guys know there's nothing more I love than sharing embarrassing stories. But one thing that's no laughing matter is bladder leaks. You see me pee pee dancing on this show, but not lately now that I take Jude. It's not happening. If you find yourself frequently running for the loo, crossing your legs to stop yourself from leaking or waking up at night to pee, then you need to know about Jude. Jude is a community healthcare brand who are on a mission to tackle the taboo of trickles, the bladder weakness to you and I. One, this is the crazy thing I didn't know. One in three women experience bladder weaknesses through our lives, including me, that you all know. If you're familiar with some of our past episodes, then you know that it, it really happened to all of us. That's why I love Jude's Bladder Control Supplement, created by bladder health experts. It's clinically proven to stop bladder leakage by 67%. It's powerful blend of pumpkin seed and soy germ extract helps women like you and I to regain control of our bladder and find freedom from leaks. You can find Jude on Amazon and use the code below off your first order with Jude so you can start your journey to a leak-free life. Thank you, Jude, for sponsoring today's episode. Ah! You guys know I couldn't have asked for a better sponsor. Now, like and subscribe and enjoy the episode. I, uh, I had to stop drinking the big bubbly waters because I just got to an age where I have a max for bubbles. What's a max for bubbles? Like my stomach hurts so bad if I have too many bubbles. Oh, you have a, like a ceiling. Yeah. There's a glass <laughs> ceiling for bubbles. <laughs> There's a bubble like, ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kept being like, oh, I'm in so much pain. And then after a minute, I realized it's after I kept chugging those like giant yeah liquid death maybe you have a small stomach and so because there's carbonation the yeah. bubbles take up room they haven't all popped you know i guess just... this this size in the clear anything bigger <laughs> game over yeah yeah i i mean i'll my i think my blood is carbonated at this point <laughs> <laughs> it's bubbling there's the so... bubblies make it so much more fun to drink i love it i love it um uh... <laughs> i never want to stop <laughs> <laughs> I want to push through the pain. <laughs> Big uh, fan. Yeah, yeah. This is a, I mean, my name is Fizza Dasani, which sounds like carbonated water. Yeah. So really, I need to have my own brand of water. Oh, my God. I, I need a partner with Dasani. <laughs> Spelled a little different. D-O instead of D-A, but... Yeah, pronounced the same. Yeah, well, yeah, Ish. I guess. I don't know. My parents are from like a village in India so they probably was one like Dasani <laughs> I was on the phone with someone um, in customer service and they assumed I was Italian they're like oh you're Ita- I'm Italian too and I'm, I just let them have it you know yeah don't ruin a bust their bubble yeah <laughs> not, I'm not Italian I'm Indian um. <laughs> I guess like anything with the E the, the I well my last name is Martino which is Italian but a lot of people think that I'm Latin because like Martinez mm, is close yeah. to that and I'm like no nah. I think they're all like, well, the a lot of European languages all derived from. They're called romance romance languages, right? So oh, yeah. they all derive from Latin. So mm. they're very there's similarities. I can see that. Yeah, all very tan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful, same thing. beautiful yeah. olive complexion. So pretty, no burnt. I know, right? Yeah, that's what Isn't you that nice? want. That's that's good. I don't I don't burn that much. Oh, it's wonderful. I have burned. Oh, growing up in Florida, the amount of times like you're like, how many times will I learn? Have you ever like miserably got a sunburn? I've never gotten a sunburn what? before. But I'm also not white. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I also grew up in Florida. Really? Yeah. I don't think I knew this. Did I know this? Maybe not. 
Because what part? Fort Myers. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So that's like the Gulf Coast, mm-hmm. south of Tampa, about two hours south of Tampa. How and long were you there for? I was born and raised. And then when I graduated, <laughs> I went to um, University of Miami. So I was in Miami for a bit. Oh, nice. Yeah. If, I'm, if my grades were better, I would have so gone there. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's, a, that's impressive. You went there, too. That's not an easy school to get into. Which, um, which Where did you grow up? I was in South Florida, and then I was like in West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm. Okay, I I recognized your area code. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, Palm Beach. <laughs> yeah, right. Or, 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 yeah, West Palm Beach. Yeah, and then I went to five school. six one. Yeah, five six one. Shout out. Uh, I went to UCF. You oh, okay in Orlando, Central Florida? Yeah. yeah. First, I got my CC though. My grades weren't as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's CC, and you then I went to UCF. You don't need a degree to do comedy, you know? No, that's true. It was always like the thought of like, I just want to get this degree so that I can leave and go to LA. Yeah. But did you want to do to go to UM? Did you want to do? Did you already want to do comedy, or did you want to do medicine? Or wasn't that like a big like? Yeah, I mean, it is a big school for people who are pre med. Um, I did not want to do that at all. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I just, I like the idea of Miami Mm -hmm. and I was undecided. So like, I guess the idea of going into medicine was, it really wasn't on the table, but like, you know, both my younger siblings, by the way, went to University of Miami and went on to become doctors. So, so those are already like, they're older, younger, (laughs) yeah. I, I just meant like they went to the school, so you wanted to go to the school. Yeah. <laughs> no. But then, yeah, they actually went and became doctors. So it's just, I went and became a comedian and an actor. And my parents were like, never again. Never, never again. <laughs> hey, it's good, though. It's like you're the older one. You get to go do your thing. And then they're, now your parents are more strict with them, probably. Yeah, yeah. They definitely got more pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of always had an interest in entertainment. So mm-hmm. there I didn't really have that ambivalence where I was like, oh, maybe I'll do medicine. It was always just, you know, I think I took the LSAT my freshman year of college just to just to see what mm-hmm. that would be like. And I'm like, no, no, this is, not <laughs> you know, th- th- this is not a lifetime of this for me. Yeah, that's you have to lo- just like comedy, anything yeah. like that. You have to love what you do, like to actually pat like. To do comedy, you have to love it because it's so miserable and like. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you choose this? No one, no one should choose this. You do it because you, you're driven to. Yes, it's- it is the only thing that your body lets you do. Yeah. <laughs> But I feel like being a doctor would be the same thing. Like that has to be has its own miserable likeness to it. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. And when people get sick, some of them die. I've so heard. That's, yeah. So that's that's tough. That is. But when people become comedians, some of them die. <laughs> so it's... The comedians die. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, that's com- it... comics laugh and stuff like that. Because it just it is it is like I always think about it. I'm like, if I knew better, it's like, maybe I would have become a doctor. <laughs> I'm like, maybe they were right. <laughs> no. But it's, I mean, it's like if you're, if you really want to do it, you're going to end up doing it, mm-hmm. I guess. And then if you're meant to do it, you'll keep on doing it, even though it's like, I don't know. When I first got into comedy, I think I was driven by something different because I was more unhealthy. I was driven more by you know, like the high of get comedy, whereas now it's I'm like more level. So the highs and lows aren't there as much. Yeah, they don't affect you as much. Yeah, which I appreciate because, mm-hmm. you know, it's one thing to feel like on top of the world. But then on the other side of the coin, you know, <laughs> after a bad set, you don't want to feel like the worst thing on yeah. earth. Like that's that's a lot. Definitely. That's, you know, I had I did a taping last the last weekend and it did not go as planned <laughs> and I was so excited yeah but yeah like this far in I'm like of course that sucks yeah but I'm gonna just let's just move on and uh you gotta that's I mean that's part more. of the job mm-hmm. I have to tell myself before every set to just like release attachment to all and any outcomes because also I tend to do better too when I'm not like oh I have to Mm -hmm. it has to go a certain way because then I guess maybe I'm more present or something I think you're more present and then there's there's that whole thing where the audience can feel when you want them to like yeah and that's pressure on them Mm -hmm. and it's like no one wants pressure (laughs) to have to respond a certain way emotionally Mm -hmm. like no that is the thought I had though after I was like did I give off 
because I wasn't nervous. I was excited. Like I felt like before I was in a good place of like caring, but not care. Like it was not too much. So I was like, what energy did I give off? That's like wasn't correct. <laughs> you know, like what was where was the connection? Like, why was it hard? Like, where was the? That's interesting. That's like always. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of information, like sort of thinking about that stuff. Like, what do you think it was? I mean, I got up right before me. They were like telling like, oh, just so you know, like make sure to knock it up in between each comic. If you have to go get a drink or go to the bathroom. So like a few people like got up right before me. So I got up on stage. Then the first two rows were missing a bunch that I didn't like when I was back there. They were there. And then I got there. Oh, where'd everyone go? And this lady was yawning. And I made a joke. about, <laughs> Oh, no, she's yawning. I just got out here and then no one laughed. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw two people in the front row that were at one of my other shows. Yeah. And then I, I since it was a taping, I wanted to be like, 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 oh, and then I was like, no. And then I think so. I think like maybe like I threw myself off. Oh, yeah. Because it's like you wanted to do something, but then you're like, oh, I didn't. I, I get that. Like, so maybe I just gave off a weird, like not confident or like pulled back. I don't know what happened, happened. But it is fun to try to figure it out. So then yeah. you don't do it again. And there's so many different factors in like a live show a live mm -hmm. comedy show but yeah maybe because i know like sometimes i'll be like oh that one maybe i was in my head a, a little bit and mm -hmm. then like that's what i notice is i have to find i'm a pretty anxious person <laughs> so i have to find a way to get like really sort of present mm -hmm. and that's where when i do my best but yeah i mean look we're human yeah you know shit happens <laughs> stuff happens all the time like and then i guess that's sort of that's where it becomes the job of like, OK, well, how do I, you know, how do I get it together to be, you know, to do my do it? Yeah, that's when that was my mindset. Then the rest of the set was like, OK, this is a job. Just do your jokes the best and don't let it affect your face. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm still having fun here. <laughs> this, is, this is great. This is the, exactly the amount of laughs I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is that one set doesn't define you. Like when no. I walked into the this building, you know, the the guy recognized you, and he was a big fan of, oh, he was of just, your dick jokes. He was so, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed. You could have just let me. I could have kept me. In we really the, gas each other up around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we make each other feel good. We, we need we need that. We definitely need that. In this in this field, yes. <laughs> it's there's so much rejection, and then like and stand up like the rejection is like in real time yeah <laughs> in the moment which is like uh, why yeah the same chemicals that um that are released during skydiving are you know released during stand-up seriously yeah i can't go to bed after right after a set yeah that's true i have to like come down from whatever mm -hmm. So that means, you know, like maybe I'll watch like Bravo for an hour <laughs> before I can even like feel like a normal person. Mm -hmm. It is definitely like, yeah, you're on this like good or bad show at a high. But man, does nothing feel better than leaving after a good set. Oh, I want like if, I guess that is always I'm like, ah, give me it again. <laughs> it's very satisfying. It is satisfying. But then, yeah, like it's if it is sort of like that feeling of a high, it's like ephemeral, like it's short lived. Mm -hmm. It's just like, OK, when's the next one? When's the next one? <laughs> like a. Like kind of like an addict. Yeah, totally. I've been feeling that way it just in life lately where it's like I need to feel it. Like I want to do something fun. Yeah. Like as usually I'm not doing anything besides just, it's just like stand up podcast to sleep. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, oh, give me like give me that high. Yeah. Uh, that's also unhealthy. I think it was um, uh, not um, why my friends, woman, whoa, I'm blanking. This female from Friends, yeah. Elaine. Why am I blanking on her real name? Oh, Jennifer, Ant oh, no. Who are you talking about from Friends? Oh, not Friends, Seinfeld. Oh, oh. Oh, Elaine, yeah. But why am I blanking Julia, on Julia? Julia Louis Dreyfus. Louis Dreyfus. Yeah. Oh, Louis Dreyfus. Julie yeah. Louise. Julia yeah. Louise Dreyfus. Yeah. I can't believe I blanked on her name. I'm so sorry. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but she said a um, like a fun little like phrase. She was like, her mom taught her like every day to look forward to something small. Like it never has to be something big. Like recording this. Like that's ex that's my my fun thing for the yeah. day. And then she's like, each day that gets you through in like a happy mood. Yeah. Yeah, I do that, and it's usually dessert. And I'll tell you where it ends. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> I am on a big dessert kick right now. I'm a big I have a big sweet tooth. Oh, I, I love sugar. 
Oh, me too. What's your favorite L.A. ice cream spot? Oh, um, I mean, I usually just go to the grocery store, so I don't have to sit. In- I don't like eating around people. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> I mean, I will, but like, it's not like I'm like excited to do it. I need to be in private for this. <laughs> this is an intimate moment. <laughs> uh, it's really funny. But I've been really uh, into like these. So there's something called True Fruit. It's frozen fruit with chocolate on it. Ooh. Yeah, it's delicious. I know Trader Joe's has like the frozen chocolate covered strawberries and chocolate covered bananas. Yeah, it's so it's similar. Okay. Like I, I love like frozen chocolate covered fruit. Hey, that's a good one because it's like you're being healthy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Even this though it's like, oh yeah, that does look like um, that does look like kind of like the Trader Joe's ones. True fruit, yum. I will find that. It's probably similar. I haven't tried the Trader Joe's ones, but now I'm like, well, you know, I <laughs> now I know. Try this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you walk past my apartment, we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, putting me on game over uh, here. It's funny. Um, okay, so the first the first segment that I do is the weekly wiener. Yes. And it is a person or thing that bugs you more than it should have. Okay. <laughs> Are you prepared for this? Yes, I am. <laughs> I am. Uh, so basically the other day um, I was walking my big dogs. I have two big huskies. Um, and I was just on the sidewalk. My big boy was peeing. Well, one's 90 pounds, one's 45 pounds. So the 90 pounder was big boy, yeah. peeing. Yeah. So I'm not going to like, you know, she started walking towards us with her little dog. And this woman, I've seen her for years in the neighborhood. She's never spoken to me, never made eye contact. We've known mutual people. Um, but she's always been very weird mm-hmm. around me. She's always carrying her little dog or whatever. <laughs> this time she decided to approach us while her little tiny elderly dog was walking on the ground and I was like you know my dogs can get reactive if a dog they don't know walks up on them yeah and I can't move he's peeing so I'm like hey you know one of my dogs is reactive can you hold on and she just kept walking towards us they had a reaction but they're close to me Mm -hmm. if you're like I keep them on a tight leash to protect them to not put them in a position where yeah yeah so like if if you feel threatened that means you are like right next to me (laughs) you know they're like right next to me so she's like she, I think she said, control your fucking dogs. <gasps> and I'm like, those are the first words you're going to say to me? Yeah, after being silent this whole time? Yeah, like, oh. you know, talking to mutual neighbors or people in the neighborhood. So Ew. she cursed me out and I'm just like, I was like, why did you walk right into it? She's like, it's a sidewalk. I was like, I told you to not, not please don't do that. Yeah, like, yeah. walk around or, or give us two seconds mm-hmm. so I can walk around. And she's like, well, your dogs are known to lunge. And I'm like, well then why would you walk towards us with your dog on the ground? You're always carrying your dog, first of all. This is what this is when you decide to approach. When I tell you, hey, don't do this, this mm-hmm. will happen. So then she's like, well, everyone in the neighborhood feels this way. And, you know, I think she's bullshitting because I, you know, I've lived in the neighborhood for a long time. Mm. And, you know, my dog has friends in the neighborhood, yeah, too. Yeah, she's just talking out of her ass. Yeah, so then, you know, that was very triggering to me. And I see her all, I kept seeing her all the time afterwards. <sighs> afterwards and it's she it just you know I want to let it go because that's not (laughs) great for me like I don't want to sit here and nurture resentment but like she is every time I see her I just am infuriated and maybe because like my dogs they're my babies Mm -hmm. so maybe there's a, a maternal instinct there of wanting to protect them like you know why why are you cursing about my dogs mm-hmm. like like fuck you and saying that other people are, are talking bad about my dog yeah and then she was started texting someone <gasps> ew yeah yeah so she was like yeah i'm gonna text this person about your dog so i was just like she was really nasty and you know i've they're also dogs you know and i gave her a warning and like i've had a dog in the neighborhood run up and like bite my dog and what? i didn't curse the owner out because it's not like she's like was like sick them yeah. you know it's like they're dogs and I understand people have a fight or flight response, but I'm not out here cussing anyone out Mm. because of their dog's actions. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe she got freaked out or was having a bad day, but she's always, the thing is, it's like her energy has always been off. And then this is the first thing you're going to say to me in like two years. Yeah, that's a good wiener. Because it seems like, yeah, she was like asking for it. It seems like she wanted, she got what she wanted. Yeah. Maybe she was bored that day and was like, I'm going to like walk up to these dogs. She's like, ah, 
You know, when some people are angry, they just want to like, cause chaos. Yeah. But it's just like, why would you put your tiny little elderly dog at risk like that? That's, That's insane. Weird. That is insane. That's just, I mean, it's, I, what else can you do? It's just like, also, I'm doing the best I can. Mm-hmm. Like, we have to share the sidewalk. The dogs have to go outside. I, they're big. I can't make them smaller <laughs> yeah, what to do take you want? up less space on the sidewalk. I can't pick up my 90 pound and 45 pound <laughs> dogs like you can. So it's just and when I got big dogs, I didn't. These are my first big dogs. And I didn't realize that this is actually not uncommon for big dog owners to experience conflict because I think bigger dogs have to be held to a higher standard because a little chihuahua can freak out, That's bark at true. everything, and everyone just sort of ignores it. But mm-hmm. if a big dog does a fraction of that, people feel scared. And I understand that, mm-hmm. but it's um, there is sort of a, a bit of discrimination against larger <laughs> dogs, which I did not realize until I had my own yeah i would have never thought about that because yeah little dogs get away with everything Everything. yeah what the hell so like if if a little dog let's say were to start going nuts and barking at my dog and they responded you know Mm -hmm. people would look at the large dog um yeah there was a friend of mine in the neighborhood who she moved but she had an English Mastiff. She has an English it's Mastiff. Like a huge dog. Oh, right? huge! That's like a hundred and something pounds. Like you, wow. you could ride him like a pony. Is that? That's not the Beethoven dog, is it? No, that's the Saint Bernard. Okay. So it's not as fl- he's not as fluffy, but it okay. is sort of like a smush face doggy, but big, big boy, and sometimes was reactive to dogs he doesn't know, and. That I, when I met her on the street, that was the first thing we met on the street because both of her <laughs> yeah, dogs were big dogs. and young. And so <laughs> I was like, oh, can because I, you know, they were, became friends and we became friends. And yeah, she was just like someone cursed her out the other day for, you know, something they brought their dog close to her dog and he had a reaction. Like you, if you don't, if the dogs don't know each other, mm-hmm. you don't know how they're going to respond. So you can't assume you can just you know like be careful especially if you have a smaller dog because no one wants to be in that position where mm-hmm. anyone gets hurt but yeah it's weird that people just expect a dog to be friendly yeah yeah and i or mean like them all to just be like i want your dog or you to pet me <laughs> a lot of dogs are rescues mm-hmm. so you don't like they've been through a lot of trauma They're, they have anxiety they you know both my dogs are rescues so like they you know have experienced abandonment at a very young age and you know some of them have been rehomed a couple times so that's that's traumatizing yeah for sure to lose your family or you know who you feel is your family so it's you know i i don't know exactly what they've been through but i try to have i when a dog reacts i try to have compassion for them because Mm -hmm. they're dogs they're like kids they don't know they don't know it's not you can't hold them to the same standard as an adult human (laughs) you know it's it is it doesn't make any sense. And they can't tell us how they're feeling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are big dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the dog from Sandlot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I miss him. We need to visit. It's cute. That, one. that okay. is like one thing I have thought like with walking dogs. I'm like, I think one of the things I would hate the most about having a dog is having to talk to people on the street, like people I don't want to talk to that's okay so there's a whole community of people i didn't even know existed <laughs> because before i had a dog i didn't talk to my neighbors i didn't talk to anyone in the neighborhood <laughs> so i didn't want to make eye contact with anyone yeah. but now because the dogs will engage or mm-hmm. you have to sometimes communicate with people you don't know if you you know i live i live in an area that's very heavily populated with dogs and people visit that area with their dogs because it's by a park mm-hmm. so there's strangers everywhere it's like certain times a day it's like an obstacle course to just get around it because there's so many like just so many people and one of my dogs is kind of triggered by strangers like people and the other one doesn't like dogs he doesn't know (laughs) so like for coming from both sides yeah i'm like (laughs) everyone like we need to keep a three foot radius we don't know you like that (laughs) Uh oh man i mean i'm dodging neighbors as it is 
trying to not talk right but yeah then the dog goes high you're like don't do this to me right now oh yeah because they have their friends they're very social too like they have their neighborhood people they want to say hi to in their neighborhood you know dog friends and then mm-hmm. you know the, if there's a dog walker they know in the neighborhood walking their friends they're like we have to go over there so it's like it, yeah it does force a lot more interaction with people than I normally would choose for myself. <laughs> Maybe it's good. It like forces you to be social with other people. I think so. I think, you know, it, it does, it, it does force you to open up a bit and, you know, like even as someone, I, I'm, I can be pretty introverted. Like I like alone time to recharge, but you know, as a human, I think it's a spectrum and I still do need to talk to people sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. I'm the exact same way. Because like also doing the podcast and like stand up, I'm like, I feel like I filled up my talking. Like I'm yeah. good to just like go home and do nothing or like read or just sit in silence. I love sitting in silence. Yes. Oh my God, I forgot to tell you. I got the walking treadmill. The, the, oh, you got it. it. I got it. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. I showed, I showed it to Mike. I got it. Um, I love it. Right now the weather's perfect, so I've been yeah. walking outside a lot more. But like at the end of the day, like you said, when you're like at eight thousand yeah. steps, and you're like, I don't want to go out. I'm gonna just do these in my pajamas real yeah, quick. Yeah, exactly. And, and get it. It's, it's eleven fifty eight p.m. You're like, I have two minutes. Two minutes to get to ten thousand. And then Matt's like, You don't. It doesn't matter. And I'm like, I need to hit my ten because I'm eating enough food that I need. <laughs> Like that'll offset my food. Uh, And it's like a goal. Like it's sort of, and then I kind of gamify it to, that makes it more fun for me. mm -hmm. It's more motivating if I, I don't know if that's how my brain wants to, that's how I can get myself to make myself (laughs) do that. But um, what are you at right now? I'm at 3.6 thousand. So I'm. Oh yeah. This is, that's owning a dog. That's a dog owner. (laughs) This is not owning a dog. 1,400. That's not, I mean, it's still early. Ah, I got some steps to do. You're, you're over, you're 15% there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Last night was one of the yeah. nights where I had to catch up. But uh, <laughs> we got, we, we got there. We got there. Yeah, you've been doing a pretty good job at like keeping the average up at 10,000. Yeah, nice. We're, we're hitting the 10. All these Instagram bitches are like, if you, I lost 20 pounds, she's walking 10 steps today. All that's my whole Instagram feed because I Googled the treadmills and now yeah. all my whole Instagram oh, yeah. is just walking bitches who walk. <laughs> you can't Google anything that is just gonna, well, everything you Google is going to linger with you. Like you have to go into incognito mode if you want to Google some weird shit. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're yeah, you're going to get, I don't know, like ball gags or <laughs> <laughs> popping up on your feed. And it's like, no. <laughs> now that we said ball gags, our phones are right there. We're oh, gonna, yeah. We're gonna... everything, Everyone's listening. That's fine. <laughs> That's, you know, show me all the ball, ball gags. I'm curious. Uh, uh, Pete Holmes had a, his last stand-up special. He does a joke. I don't know if you heard it, where he just keeps yelling something like um, offensive or some, some like, Thing that you don't want on your phone. He's like, now, ha ha, all your phones are gonna have that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's silly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I wish there was some follow up there. Like, oh yeah, see, if uh, it worked. Yeah, it's a great. Uh, yeah, I wonder. That would be cool if he was like, let me know tomorrow. But we've all had our own experiences with that too, where mm-hmm. we're talking about something and it pops up on our Instagram feed as an advertisement. Yeah. I kind of like it. I hate it as much as I like it. Because it's so fun to order things online. So it's very targeted. Like it actually, they actually get you stuff that you'd be interested in. Yeah. So they find, that's cool that they can find the market. Mm-hmm. That's pretty incredible. Yep. What have you bought from? Oh, my favorite purchase, which when like my podcast is bigger, I want to get them as a sponsor so bad. So I've always been bloated. Like I'm a bloated girl. I just, my, and I just bitch about it. I'm like, I can't so fit. I can't have beer. If I'll drink the beer, I'm like, oh, I'm by my pants. <laughs> I, I'm just like, it hurts. And I, it, I look like pregnant all the time. Like once like, like I eat and, and I drink. So I uh, started taking a symbiotic by this company called Seed. And it's a um, probiotic prebiotic in one pill. Yeah. And I haven't been bloated since I started taking it. Oh, them. it's incredible. And I'm like, this took me a long time to find. Yeah. My life could have been changed forever ago. But that was a targeted ad of me bitching about being bloated. And then it was like, e- bloated? And I'm like, me? Yeah. <laughs> and, and that it, worked. And it worked. That's so, well, you don't look, yeah, I mean, you look great. Oh, thanks. 
Yeah, I it mean, usually might, happens later in the I day. I might ask for the name of that. I'll see. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you. It works so good. Yeah, we can't say the name too many times because we're not paying. For, you're not giving me <laughs> money. But <laughs> but one day, that's my my best targeted yeah. ad. Um, okay, so my my weekly wiener. I don't know. It depends on what you watch. If this if you've dealt with this, but um, it is. So I'm. Do you ever have you heard of the show? A lot of people haven't. The show, heard of the show Big Brother? Yeah. Okay, I love the show Big Brother, and so it's a reality TV show, if you don't know, and, like, each week, like, someone gets eliminated, so, but what they do is they, on CBS, they show the thumbnails, Yeah. and they do this with a lot of TV shows, but they show the thumbnail, and you go to watch the episode, but, like, say you saved up and you're not caught up, the thumbnails show the people. It, oh, it's a spoiler. The thumbnails are spoilers. Oh, no. Why would you yeah. show? Like, how about just put, like, an episode number or, like, something else? Yeah. But you're, like, you're, like, <laughs> <laughs> like try to get the right episode and, like, close your eyes a little bit. Spoiler thumbnails. Are, that is such, that's so messed up. That is. Because you know that we haven't seen it yet because we're going to watch it. So why do that? Yeah, that's, I think. The people over there need to hear this. I'm going to, I'm. you know, CBS, this is important. it's right down in Studio City. I think we should go right after this. <laughs> They're in the house right Two now. Two person picket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no more thumbnail spoilers. spoilers. That really rolls off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> but I hate it so much. And it just seems like common sense yeah. to not do that. Why are you doing that? I mean, spoiler warnings are such a big thing on the Internet. So Mm -hmm. it is, you know, someone must they must not be aware. Someone needs to know. Yeah. I think I have a friend of a friend who does work on Big Brother. So I could get the word out. Yeah. Just saying. I I used to work on the promos for Big Brother with old Julie Chen. What? Not Julie Chen Moonves? Julie Chen? She was Julie Chen until the scandal, and then she decided to start saying Moonves because she wanted to stand by her man. Trust me, I know all of it. <laughs> I'm all I'm deep in the Big Brother fam. I didn't know you did that. That's so cool. So how do you feel about the spoiler? Spoiler it really rolls off the tongue, like I said. I again. only did the promos. Okay. But I've been there. Wow. Well, we're going to talk to Mike on the Patreon later. <laughs> That's interesting. They take your ID and everything once you go into the house and the stage that they're shooting her on is legit right outside like the front door of the house. Oh, it's, wow. And they keep it cold as shit in there. Interesting. <laughs> keep hmm. everyone awake. Yeah. Alert. Try to keep them awake. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, that's my wiener. We would know to take our jackets to that job in the middle of the summer every year on that stage. <laughs> Damn. And the house is on that lot just right in Studio City that's at CBS. so cool. Yeah. Oh, I love Big Brother. I haven't watched it, but it's oh. been around for a long time. So it def- definitely there's an audience. I just like how it's not, well, he could say I'm wrong, but to me, I don't think it's manipulated by producers because they're all in a house. It's just like yeah. throw people in a house, there's going to be enough drama. And that's what I like about it. Especially personalities. Yeah, that's all Big you need. personalities. Different types of per- people and personalities and... And confined spaces. Yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> you're not You're not going to get Boundaries out Boundaries will be broken. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. There will be tears. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my meaner. Um, that's okay. a good one. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to make a difference. There, yeah. There, with dog walkers. You know, dogs, though, dog owners like i have on the podcast a lot of leaners are dealing with other dog like dog karens dog, yeah that seems really. like it's like a big thing i mean i i wasn't expecting it you know like i've i just i was not ready for the culture <laughs> shock of mm-hmm. like people just yeah going off yeah because they i mean i was in a chipotle once and this woman <laughs> had a small dog and she just said to me she's like i don't like the way your dog looks <gasps> Which what? it's like as a parent, like I, I, you know, I had to, after I got my order, I did have to follow her outside and tell her a little <laughs> bit of something. I had to get her together a little bit, you know? And then I realized, oh, there's people across the street. I don't want to end up on the internet. <laughs> what? Why would someone ever call someone's dog like ugly or whatever the hell? She my was dog getting is gorgeous. At? I've a, seen your dogs. They are both gorgeous. He's a, um, the way, yeah, the one, because I only had him at the time. And, you know, he gets stopped in the street all the time. Like, I'm just like, do you want to, 
are you hitting on my dog? Like, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to say. You're playing hard to get with my dog. <laughs> what if you said that next time someone says something mean about your dog, be like, are you trying to fuck my dog? <laughs> <laughs> Just dead serious. Yeah. Like, that's gross. And this isn't the first time someone's tried to fuck my yeah. dog. <laughs> But yeah, it's like I was, uh, I mean, I had no idea that, you know, people, you, I, there, people have those type of reactions and that they're not uncommon mm-hmm. um, talking to other large dog owners, at least in the city where you're, you know, like not all of us have just a big yard at our disposal. Mm-hmm. So we're going on a lot of walks. We're going to public places where we can let the dogs play. So it's a thing. We got to spread awareness. Yeah. We'll make a thumbnail. <laughs> we'll just combine our problems all the spoilers yeah <laughs> lady tries to fuck dog that would get a lot of views we're yeah. making it clip it <laughs> yeah let's put that on youtube uh okay so the next segment is um embarrassing stories miserable moments whatever like feeling got you into the joke and i love to think about like a moment that you made into a joke yeah but i just as much love the moments that <laughs> Like it just doesn't work on stage yeah. or it's just too dark or you can't figure it out yet. Like, and you're still like trying. Which one do you want to hear? Whatever you want to do. Do you oh. have one of each? Yeah. All right. Let's do, uh, let's do not into a joke first. Okay. Not into a joke. Okay. That's, this is, this happened pretty recently. So I'm still working it out. I'm okay. like, there's a joke somewhere, but um, I, there's this app it's called sniff spot which is basically like airbnb but for renting people's yards for you know 30 minutes an hour a couple hours or whatever for dogs for dogs yeah that's cool like, yeah so they can it play is in really a cool. yard mm-hmm. oh i've never heard of that so yeah i was shocked that i had just heard of it because i'd been looking for something like that i was like this is perfect and there was one place that was that's right by where i live like walking distance all the other ones are like way out in like uh pomona or something where there's big yards yeah exactly <laughs> But these people were pretty close. And so we went quite often. I was like, this is awesome. And, you know, they get to run around. It's fully enclosed. So I know that they're safe because mm-hmm. we're in the middle of the city. So it's like cars and stuff like that's a real that's like, you know, that it's dangerous. It's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. But um, we had a really early appointment. It was like 8 a.m. And right when we got there. I had to go to the bathroom and they don't have a bathroom. You don't meet the owners. Oh, no. So they're just inside or like the house is closed and you're just in the in the yard. Yeah. Or even if they're not home, you can. There's a code to Mm. get in. (laughs) Drink some bubbly water. Oh, yeah. I'll burp with you. (laughs) I won't leave you hanging. So I couldn't hold it. (sighs) I couldn't hold it. And I'd been in the yard. So I was familiar where their main camera was and there was a shed and I was like okay I don't think there are any cameras behind this shed (laughs) and you know I they had doggy bags there I had my own doggy bags as well and then they had like these uh, unscented dog wipes which I use on my own dogs (laughs) and I was like okay you know I it's coming out regardless Mm -hmm. it's coming out it's just fucking (laughs) coming out so I mean I just like I need to think quick I need to act I went behind the shed I did my thing I was paranoid still I was like looking for cameras Mm -hmm. and there was a little sign that said something about the ring app which is and yeah yeah for cameras cameras are out somewhere so I'm thinking okay hopefully that's just a sign they didn't put up and they just (laughs) stored it behind but yeah my dogs were peeking in initially and I was like yeah I don't want you to see me like this go go (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I cleaned up you know like I figured okay well you know I'm paying I'm basically paying them to let my dog shit in their yard and then I'll clean that up like I'll leave it as is so uh-huh. I kind of you know took care of my stuff and we went on play and it was like also like it was there was a lot going on I think I had like a horrible case of leash burn behind my knee oh yeah like I was it was so I was kind of limping and stuff and it was like we were running late and I didn't it was there was a lot going on it Uh, was the chaotic day morning exactly and it was just sort of the best decision I could make at the time (laughs) you know and then I'm like oh god I hope no one saw that (laughs) and you know I after our session, I went back and the calendar was completely open before everything was off. <gasps> everything. They, they took off all their dates. Oh, no dates were available after God. that. And I don't know if it's a coincidence, but I mean, <laughs> I'm like, did they did they know? Were they like, you yeah, know, that would totally get me in my head. Yeah, I was in, you know, 
it's fine. We've made do. It was, you know, I think <laughs> that particular week I needed to burn a lot of energy early in the day for them. But yeah, I'm like, just the fact that all the dates are, you know, it's no longer available. Like the calendar was completely open for bookings. And then after my session, nothing, <laughs> nothing. August, September, October, November, nothing. Yeah, like, this is enough. We don't want to deal with this anymore. Yeah. And I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But like, I just, you know, I, I, I didn't know what else to do because mm. I wasn't going in my pants. Like that's no, no. You gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah. And you know, I did the best I could. Yeah. And if I had to make the same, if I was in that same position, (laughs) I would do it again because I don't see what the better solution is. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's. People underestimate that. They just expect, like, they don't get it. Yeah. Like, now, like, places like all these restaurants, they don't let you go to the restroom. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, there's something exciting about it too like it's very primal yeah <laughs> it's very primal you're like you're also in a very vulnerable position like I felt like I could relate to my dogs <laughs> you know like they like to find a spot they feel safe in comfortable uh, in and I get that yeah you were one with them in that moment yeah <laughs> yeah I mean I even sort of like channeled them because I've like I've never just shit on the ground yeah like thankfully you know like i haven't had until you know a few took me a few couple decades before i had to shit outside if anything you should be grateful you made it that far yeah that's a win right there so i thought this was (laughs) the crazy thing is like i thought this was kind of a funny thing to share with a good friend and she was disgusted with me Oh, she's not from Florida. <laughs> yeah, I was like, she is from Florida. She is. She, is. she should know better. I'm saying. I mean, oh. Maybe it was triggering for her. Maybe it reminded her of that one time she had a shit outside. I don't know. <laughs> but she was like, I was shocked because I was like, well, what, what, you know, what would you have me do? Yeah. But she's like, well, go to the bathroom at home. I was like, that wasn't an option. No. Like we were out already. We were there. So that was surprising. <laughs> that was, I didn't expect, I was just, you know, expecting her to think, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, and that is. Like, I think it's funny. Yeah. I mean, I've been in situations where you got to just figure it out too. I don't yeah. have the kind of body that can just, like, you know, the people who, this is an old joke. I never, it was just like open mic joke 10 years ago. I tried working, but it was something like, I hate, what did it, what did it say? They're like, I, anyways, I hate people who say that, um, they don't poop in public (laughs) well that's a luxury exactly my thought like who do you oh you get to choose (laughs) like give me that body some people are super regular like i will say my dad is and i don't i'm (laughs) sorry that we're on this topic of conversation (laughs) but you know it is there's a reason it's the lowest common denominator we have it all have it in common Mm -hmm. So, like, some people are very regular. And, and GI health, gastroenterological health is very important. Hey, you know? I'm taking my symbiotic. I'm yeah, feeling exactly. better. <laughs> yeah, I'm a probiotic taker, a probiotic taker myself. But, like, yeah, some people are very regular. They're blessed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a very anxious person <laughs> that uh, presents itself in all of my systems mm-hmm. in my body sometimes so especially those early years of stand-up right i was just gonna say that my first stand-up set ever i said something embarrassing like um oh it's my first stand-up show so i got the anxiety shits (laughs) (laughs) god damn it but yeah when you first started stand-up that was one of the hardest things i had it for years yeah i had those kind of nerves for years and like I'd be <laughs> I have to go right before like I'm just like really have to go right before I'm supposed to go on stage so I come mm-hmm. out my I wash my hands and my hands would be wet because mm-hmm. I'd be running from the bathroom <laughs> and then like you know you shake the hand I'm, like, I'm sorry it's, it's clean it's, it's clean. clean it's clean <laughs> you're hoping you don't get electrocuted holding the mic you know it's like a whole thing I think that is a sign that like that should have been like n- realizing when that stopped be like oh I've made it to the other side of the stand-up accomplishments to where I don't shit myself before each show. (laughs) I mean, it is kind of like a fight or flight reaction Mm -hmm. because it's, you know, like, like we were talking about earlier, how the same chemicals are released for people who jump out of airplanes, Mm -hmm. who skydive. Like this is kind of a terrifying thing. This is like emotional skydiving. Mm -hmm. Totally. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you're going to sometimes your body's going to be like, OK, emergency, get mm-hmm. light, like a really get rid of the baggage. You got to run. You got to run. You're in danger. 
<laughs> oh, no. I hope that joke works out. I mean, the name of the app is really funny by itself. Sniff Spot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm like, that yard was so cool. I hope... I hope they didn't see. I hope they didn't see me. Like, I really don't want that to pop up on the dark web or something like some grainy video of me no. squatting <laughs> behind someone. Some good people's shed. Can give it a Google. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you can, if it's out there, I'd like to know. My only like super like overthinking thought would be if you like logged, if you made a different account with a different email and stuff. Yeah. And see if their place was open, like to see if they blocked off the dates just for you. That, I did. Actually, I did? Did, well, I didn't make another account, but I had a friend <laughs> okay. sign up and they said that it wasn't available. So, okay. So maybe they were just like, you know, this is enough. It's not. <laughs> they're like, you know, it's it's not too personal. It's more just like, you, you know, this is this is a lot. We need a break. I get it. I get it. If I uh, I mean, I, I didn't. I don't think I was on camera, but you never know. It must have just been a coincidence. It could be, but I don't. I don't know. We'll never know. I mean, I was paranoid about it that whole day. <laughs> I was like, they see me. Like, You've never met the people, right? No, I haven't. Like we've. I mean, f I've been there several times prior, so we'd given each other good reviews. Like mm. I, you know, I'd leave the yard as it was, <laughs> and they were pretty hospitable. Like they'd have like doggy bags and toys and stuff out. So it was. Yeah, it was really cute, and I'm sorry if you know if they're listening. I'm really sorry, you know. And I, you know, if I if I had a ch a better choice, I would not have done that. So well. yeah, that's. But I, you know, I did clean it up as I would have cleaned up, maybe even more thoroughly because of the shame. Do you feel closer to yourself? Yeah, I I, I I do, actually. I was like, oh, I got through that. Mm -hmm. I got through that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it, it was a very like primal experience. Yeah. You know, and I think sometimes maybe <laughs> subconsciously we want that. Yeah. I've totally been in, in like scenarios where you're like, oh, you, you're just so relieved that you don't even care about anything else at the yeah. moment. Oh, it was coming out. <laughs> it was, I mean, there was no doubt about it. I was like, you know, I was like, uh, you know. I would have, you know, held it if I could. Yeah. And kept it close. No but shit. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, you know, it, it was what it was. It was what it was. And uh, I, I do think poop jokes are some of the hardest ones. Like, they can so be done. But they are definitely like a, I feel like it's like death and poop jokes yeah. are, are the ones you have to navigate very, like, like um, I don't know what the right word is. Like there's a you just I really have to like say it the right way. Yeah, yeah, because they're both like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uncomfortable, I guess. Yeah, and it's like even this part. I think a a funny part of this story is the fact that you know, like yeah, shitting outside, fine. You know, that's that's funny or whatever. But the fact that they took off every single date <laughs> that they had every single subsequent date they took off and i was like that hurts <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to figure that out it, it's pretty recent you know maybe i need a little more time you know <laughs> just to get over it maybe it's a little raw that's good though yeah. that is definitely a good miserable moment yeah yeah it it was that mm -hmm. it well, was that but it was so many more so many yeah. more things also yeah. it was so much more it was like <laughs> also exciting and yeah like what a bonding a experience yeah what did you just what did you just say i i felt so good i just now keep shitting in your heart <laughs> <laughs> that won't work what if that was something that happened to somebody like wow i'm alive and then they just like <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm like I'm bougie I like wet wipes yeah. and all that stuff so you know like it wasn't ideal for me mm -hmm. I wasn't I wasn't doing that for fun or to spite <laughs> them or to be like an asshole or a prank it was like yeah it was just a very basic human need and mm. and I'm sorry I'm still sorry <laughs> I'm sorry uh, and I get it yeah whatever yeah I, I like it though that's yeah. good. Thank you. I could I could relate. <laughs> Mike's like, what are you guys talking about? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what was a moment that you have made into a joke? So I was raised Muslim. And one of the things 
you're supposed to do in the religion is go to Mecca in Saudi Arabia once in your lifetime. I, I don't consider myself a religious person because I'm not a big fan of dogma, but I'm, you know, more spiritual. But mm-hmm. my parents, I don't know why they posted. They, I guess, you know, they they didn't want me to go to they don't want me to go to hell. So they're like, <laughs> well, you know, like, how about you come with us and on this family vacation to, <laughs> to Mecca, which is currently in the country of Saudi Arabia, which, um, you know, isn't known for being the most progressive towards women. But I thought, okay, it's a, you know, a unique novel experience. Um, so I'll do it. And, you know, I think experiencing sort of coming from a, the U.S. where sexism is a lot more subtle. <laughs> it's here, but it's like, you know, subtle, it's yeah. not like you have to physically cover up everything. And it was just, you know, it was basically this uh, week and a half to week long pilgrimage oh wow in the desert time. and you know there were rituals you had to do and you know it was at the time it was summer so I was fully covered but like you know I wasn't sometimes I'd sweat and my baby hair would come out and everyone would look at me like I was about to have a nip slip on my forehead <laughs> You know, so I made jokes about that experience and uh, I don't want to call it miserable because I don't want a fatwa put on me. And yes, I don't yes, want. Yes. Yeah. But I will say it was um, challenging. Mm-hmm. Let's say that. That's, That's a good, a good word. way. Challenging. Um, and rife with material. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny when I wear a hat, my baby hairs are like this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? Yeah, just just like bangs, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, not good ones though. Uh, <laughs> did your siblings go with you or is it just you, just went, you and your parents? All of us. Everybody went. Yeah, okay. so um, both my siblings and both my parents. Okay. Yeah. Two weeks though, that's a long time. In the desert too? How yeah. hot does it get there? Or do you remember, like, was it just, are you dying? It was very hot. It was, I mean, I guess 90s, maybe 100 at some point. Because it was the summer. Yeah. So, so like Sherman Oaks. Oak yeah. temperature. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like an oven. <laughs> but uh, it was cool. Like, it was cool to have that experience. And in that sense, like, you know, I'm lucky that, you know, everyone gets to, to have that. Mm. But it was challenging. Yeah, I'm sure it just has to have been like a culture shock or like just seeing something so different. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, little things like, you know, no one would look twice if you had your baby hair showing here. And, you know, (laughs) just to have. Yeah, I mean, it's it is very different culturally. Mm -hmm. Did your did you say you have sisters or brother and sister? I have one brother, one sister. Okay. did they like it? Did they enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, I think because it was physically taxing in some ways, everyone had their own respective freak out. <laughs> no one at the same time. Yeah, you take turns. Yeah, but every literally every single person had a freak out on the trip. <laughs> I, I got mine out of the way early. I was the first one. That's good. Yeah, and then I was able to just sort of be there and support everyone else through their <laughs> respective freak outs. <laughs> it's funny. But I think, you know, like... Um, yeah, I can't, you know, I, I don't, I can't speak for anyone else's beliefs, but I think, um, they're, they practice more traditionally. So I think it probably was a good, I would, you know, a good experience for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's not, I mean, this has been going on for a long time. So like it's before airplanes and <laughs> air condition and you know that type of stuff mm. so it is and they maintained some of those a lot of those same rituals so yeah it's uh there is a, a phil- physical physically challenging element to it totally i'm sure even like this is no comparison at all but like just visiting other places last summer i went my stepdad's from puerto rico so yeah. we went there and i wasn't picturing like i know they went through like a a bad hurricane and stuff like that but when i went there it was like it looked like the hurricane happened yesterday oh yeah and i was like wow you it really always makes you grateful also when you go somewhere else i'm like was not expecting this yeah this is crazy yeah i mean it can take sometimes years to clean up after a really bad hurricane yeah for a city to sort of get back to what it was like 
truly i mean you, you're from florida as well so like yeah. are you, have you been through hurricanes i've been through a lot and like yeah. bigger ones but I, feel, I don't it was more like trees always than yeah. like houses like this was like puerto rico everything was just destroyed yeah like it was really bad but yeah we've had like floods in florida and and stuff but nothing like traumatic i think the hurricane andrew when i was a baby and, oh like, yeah that was the biggest one and I just remember because like all like the roads were all like lifted and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing photos from that. But I don't know. I think recently my a couple years ago, my parents house was hit with, by a really bad hurricane for the first time in like, you know, like in 30, 40 years, they've had a direct hit. So like there was a yeah, good run. Fort Myers is not probably less than than like the bottom of the coast yeah but they their house did get um <sighs> luckily the roof stayed on but the flooding was very intense so they had to like replace all the drywall and the floors mm -hmm. and throw out a bunch of stuff yeah. through water damage but i mean that's part of living in florida <laughs> yeah. i guess you know <laughs> yeah take the good of the bad yeah. and as long as everyone's safe as long as no one gets eaten by a gator <laughs> <laughs> I saw her again bringing gators in. It's like tornadoes. You see the cow. <laughs> we just have gators spinning. <laughs> I'll take a cow. I'll take the cow easily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm doing uh, this segment at the end where it's called Misery Loves Company. So it is people send in their miserable moments yeah. and we read them. And today is sponsored by this company called Jude. It's a so I have an overactive bladder, which means <laughs> I pee all the time. So I be popping behind red barns <laughs> <laughs> left and right. I think I peed everywhere. Yeah, I've marked my territory like your dog. <laughs> so this supplement, I take it and they sponsored the podcast. So yeah. they have a community on Facebook, um, Jude Community Story. So I have stories from some pee so from some fellow pee fellows, some yeah. fellow peers. <laughs> Some fellow peers. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see what we got. We'll work on that name. The f wait, what was the name we came up with, my listeners? Mis uh. Las Miserables. <laughs> <laughs> Las Miserables. We're still working on I've it. I've peed outdoors a couple times. Uh, like... Uh, maybe like five yeah where a popular squat yeah yeah <laughs> one time i was on crutches really and yeah and i couldn't make it to my apartment i got to the door put the key in and my bladder was like you're home and you were right there in front of it was you know i was i've never run on crutches before and that was i was like a gazelle <laughs> With my broken foot. I was really determined not to pee on myself and, you know, uh, it didn't that's make it. the worst when you're right there. I the know. amount of times I have peed my pants in the bathroom stall. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like I couldn't have gotten any closer I just couldn't get the pants off in time that's so and I have I have like four pants I have to find a seamstress at shows yeah. where I have panic because I think at a comedy show I'm gonna pee my pants before my set yeah so I rip off my pants and I have break my zippers oh, no. so then I've gone on stage with broken zippers now I buy buttons <laughs> Oh, okay. So We're that's who buy buttons. <laughs> I was always like, who buys button flies? Now I get it. You gotta go. I gotta yeah. pee. <laughs> That's just rip button. it yeah worse to put on but at least they get you get to put them back on that's the positive of the button you might need those gigolo pants that you could just rip off oh on stage. my god that'd be amazing yeah. that'd be good yeah so when's your birthday i might have to get <laughs> you a June. pair okay <laughs> good to okay, know okay so let's see these pee stories so many years ago, I stayed the weekend in a tall three-story house. The problem was there was only one toilet in the only bathroom of the whole house. First of all, that would be a nightmare to me uh, and you. <laughs> yeah. I actually have a very strong bladder usually, which is okay. why I think at that time I pushed it to the limit. Like I should have gone to the bathroom before. Like I had to go to the bathroom, but I'm like, oh, I'll drive home and go home. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing like peeing at home you know <laughs> just, uh, it hits different best place to pee <laughs> so i was like i can make it and yeah I, you know, I didn't, didn't. almost yeah, yeah yeah but so close okay. many years ago i stayed the weekend in a tall three-story house the problem was there was only one toilet in the only bathroom for the whole house sunday morning the man of the house was soaking for hours in the bath he was not the type to ask to budge but i was dying for a wee <laughs> <laughs> but i had a basin in my bedroom 
Yes, I perched on said basin and peed. Oh, the relief. But I'm a larger lady and the inevitable happened. The basin came away from the wall. <laughs> the cover up story was that I had leaned on the basin to examine an ulcer in my mouth. <laughs> Been That's there. so specific. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I've totally pissed in cups. Yeah. I, I did that once in my garage. Um, <laughs> and let's just say the cup runneth over. I know. It nev- it's so much more pee than you yeah. think it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. You know, I I was like, why did I even bother? There was pee all over my hand. I was, <laughs> have you ever done it? I've tried peeing in a car before. And you're like, you just have to suck it in because you're like, oh, no, that didn't overflow. I, f- I feel like I might have peed in a car before. <laughs> and But yeah, it's there's so much more pee than than I expected. Yeah. Like I was. <laughs> <laughs> you don't realize when you're peeing in a cup, like when you're peeing in a toilet that it is. So much. Yeah, yeah, because the toilet's big. <laughs> <laughs> Blends in there, water. First of all, this guy shouldn't have been taking a long bath if people if he knows there's only one yeah. one bathroom. I, I think I might have said this before, but one time I was about to pee my pants. I was because our apartment has one bathroom. Yeah. I was pacing around. I was like, he's gotta be out soon. Yeah. And then I walk in eventually. I'm like, I'm coming in and I gotta go. Yeah. He is um He's well, not ironing. He's um, steaming our pillowcases. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Leave the bathroom. I don't, I don't think he's ever steamed a pillowcase in. Uh, I've never seen this happen before. Today was the day. Today was the day. Yeah. And I'm just holding it. I think I'm going to die. So, But I do come up with cover-up stories, too. Like, any time I do something like that. Yeah. Like, did you, when you were in the <laughs> in the yard, did you think about, like, what am I going to say if anyone catches me? Like, plan a cover-up story? I don't think there was any cover-up for that. That was, it was, very, it was just brazen. Yeah. It was, it was what it was. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't even know how, what, what the story would be. Because uh-huh. yeah. it's, I mean, you know, it, I'd be caught red-handed. <laughs> Yeah. It, would, it it is what it is. Oh, that that made me think of um. So when my mom stayed at my place, we had like a pull out bed, and um, last time <laughs> she we get. Uh, have you ever, ever been to Silver Lake Ramen? I've heard of it. I have not been. Oh, it's the best ramen, but we got it to go, and it's like these big cover ups. So probably like her basin, like a big cup. Yeah. And uh, she was like, I kept going pee that night, and I felt awful going into your bedroom multiple times. Like she was like, it is like the kind of thing like when you go to the bathroom, you're like, okay, you could bug someone, but yeah. like at the third time, you're like, I am gonna hold it until I die. <laughs> so <laughs> she, the following time she visited, she was like, I peed in. Um, <laughs> we got ramen again, and she started dying laughing, and I'm yeah. like, what's so funny? <laughs> She's like, last time I visited, I pissed in this in uh in your kitchen. <laughs> And I was like, Mom, just go to the bathroom. Yeah. You're not going to bug us. So, yeah, we've all. What happens after you pee in that? I guess she threw it down the sink and cleaned the sink. It's really gross if you think the follow up. (laughs) And yeah, what happened to this lady? Where'd you go? Where'd you put the pee after that? That's the, the next part. But when you have to go, you're just thinking about, let's just get the pee out and then we'll think of the next step. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the hierarchy of needs. It's just like, okay, (laughs) the pee has to come out. Everything else comes after. You know, priorities change. Exactly. My mom keeps telling me to write a joke about how, like, when you have to go to the bathroom, how you lower your standards for the bathroom, as in, like, you get older and lower your standards for men. You're like, (laughs) I'm not peeing in a gas station. I'm better than that. And then you end up just, like, pissing outside as you just, like, yeah, you're like, it doesn't matter anymore. But bladder probably doesn't get stronger with age no i would assume but with jude supplements <laughs> you can, uh, seamless seamless all right so the second story i keep a shiwi in the caravan in case of emergencies but we had some friends over and the wife offered to help in the kitchen i turned around to find her using the shiwi oh, no. as a funnel for the meat juices oh no i didn't have the heart to tell her but had it, had to giggle to myself as we ate. 
<laughs> note to self, hide it out of reach. Oh, wow. I have one of those. Have you seen them? Mine's called a go girl. It's like a funnel for your vagina. Yeah. In <laughs> if I saw someone using that for meat. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it is. She but why would she think to use that for meat? I guess she, what did it so did it what does it say? She used it to um drain the meat juices probably cooking ground beef or bacon or something. <laughs> she she and thought it was it as a funnel <laughs> in the kitchen. She stored her shiwi in the kitchen. I get they are in their her camper. So oh, okay. And uh guess yeah, you got to you got to keep those things private. Um, I wouldn't have said anything invention. either, but I feel like I would have died laughing. Like, I feel like I, or I guess maybe when the person left, she was probably laughing at it, <laughs> at, like with her partner or something. I mean, I assume it must have been fully clean because she didn't freak out. They had, they ate it. Yeah, they ate the food. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm surprised that <sighs> she was able to, Not. you know, she didn't stop her right away. <laughs> I was like, no. Maybe it was Sterile, like, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it was too far gone. Yeah. Like the she, she went by the time she saw, she's like, what's done is done. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> it's, maybe it wasn't cooked yet. So that seems burn like that, away all the germs. I hope so. That seems like it would be a scene in a, um, in a, God, I'm dying with names today. In a, um, like a. Meet well, the Fokker. A Ben Stiller. Yeah. Technically, if you were just draining the meat juices. You're holding this in your hand. You're pouring the juices into it. It's not like you're pouring the meat into the funnel or anything. So she just had pee in her hand. They weren't eating pee. Well, no, if you pee through the funnel but and it wasn't pouring cleaned. into the funnel, it's just going in the trash. You're training meat juices. Well, maybe oh. was she squeezing it above or was she setting the meat on the, t the wider part? At the top, I don't know. It'd be weird if you put the meat in the funnel. Like, <laughs> can into the funnel to like train into a can. Or maybe. Okay, so maybe it wasn't as bad yeah. as it Not sounds. As feral as we thought. Yeah. <laughs> My imagination is just trying to stomach it better. <laughs> My imagination, it was pouring the juice onto like the turkey. Oh goodness! <laughs> oh, oh my God! I don't, I don't know, I don't know. It, right? It's so <laughs> funny. Yeah, if you guys are listening, you don't have a shiwi. Those things come in handy. I bring those out on Halloween when there's nowhere to pee, or like hiking stuff like that. You're like, here we go. I got a little pepe. <laughs> so it's just so you have something to aim with. Yeah, it just it, yeah. it's gives you pretty much a penis. And then in the car when you. Have you used it in the car? I have not used it in the car. Because I've seen devices where people basically can pee when they're driving. Women can pee when they're what? driving. What? I need that. And I, it looks like they, there's like a tube that leads to some <gasps> sort of bag or container. So, I mean. The Shiwi car and camp pack. Whoa. Oh. We need that. The dreaded traffic jam. We've all been there. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. for the loo and not a toilet in sight. The Shiwi car and camp pack. Is the perfect solution for those dilemmas. 30 bucks? That's cheap. I wonder how many of those have been used in the 405. <laughs> Cheaper than car detailing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely a lot in LA traffic for sure. If you're an Uber driver, do you keep a courtesy one for your passengers? No way. <laughs> They'd get a five star for me. I think if you pee in like an uber driver's car then they can charge you i think fine. so just like I th i've heard that you can do that with throwing up and people that makes up. sense so it make, yeah oh well and then who's you know like i don't know if i could clean out the shiwi after you know every drive yeah every, would you yeah. remember <laughs> i'd be like yeah, i'd just be like you have to go outside <laughs> <laughs> there's a you use it you buy a policy involved yeah yeah definitely yeah. little disposable plastic che yeah plastic chiwis are not a bad idea i think they should all be disposable that would actually be a better idea my friend gave me these bags that you can pee in i forgot what they're called but it's like you pee in it and it does like um her husband's in the navy yeah so she gave me they i guess they have those there but i don't know you have all the accessories I, for know. Peeing. I love it <laughs> every christmas people just buy me pee accessories <laughs> <laughs> you pee in it it's supposed to like turn it into like a hard like make it hard or something it sounds like it's like cat litter enough of my pee devices mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for sending in your pee stories if you have any more embarrassing moments um you can send them to misery loves mandy 
pod at gmail.com. Um, right, is there anything you'd like to plug? Yeah. Uh, when does this come out? If you have a date you need it by, I can just make that happen. Oh, sweet. Okay, so... Uh, I have a monthly show at the Comedy Store, nice. Facial Recognition Comedy, that I run with uh, a few other brown women. And uh, yeah, it's a really funny show. The next one is Friday, September 20th uh, at 10.30 p.m. at the Comedy Store. I'm hosting, so I'll be there all night uh, for the duration of the show. <laughs> I'm not going to live there. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, tickets are um, available. Uh, I have the links on my social media. Instagram might be the the one to plug for that so um i'm physicist on instagram i won't assume you know how to spell that so i will do that for you <laughs> f-i-z-a-a-d-o-s-a-n-i <laughs> -A -A yes there is only one z and two a's <laughs> uh yeah I don't, I don't you know my name's not fizz so i don't know why my mom did that but she did <laughs> that sounds pretty cool though fizz -ah. -ah. <laughs> i could just switch up the pronunciation one day i'm like you know what i'm going by fizz -ah. yeah it, yeah it really catches on za for short za, yeah za. <laughs> well, i'll put i'll put the ticket link for for your show below Thank you. so make sure to go see that uh, you've been doing that show for a while right yeah we've been doing it for years and um we used to have a, a bi-coastal residency actually we first started at west side comedy theater in santa monica and then we started doing it also at new york comedy club oh, cool in new york for a bit but this was pre-pandemic and mm. then um you know when stuff started opening back up we you know we found, got our show at the Comedy Store, which has been super fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I were to choose any venue to do a show, Comedy Store for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we do it in the belly room upstairs. So it's very intimate, but um, we pack it out. So it's it's, you know, it, there's a lot of energy, <laughs> condensed energy. Yeah. It's like an atom. I love that room. <laughs> I love performing in there. Yeah, it really is like. You're one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure to do it and uh, do it. Make sure to go to it. And thank you for doing the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yay. All right. Bye.